Welcome to I Learned a Thing in the Bathroom from Dollar Shave Club, where we explain something very complicated in mere minutes to occupy your brain while you shave. In this edition, we'll be answering the question, what happens when the human race runs out of food? As explained by someone who sounds smart because he's British. In a little over 30 years, the human race will grow to 9 billion people compared to our current seven. And we're going to have to ask some serious questions about how we're going to feed them all. Oh, come on. I have like 17 different flavors of hummus in my fridge. How much more food could we need? According to the United Nations Food and Agriculture Association, we're going to have to increase our food production by 70% by the year 2050. And also, according to the UN, one of the simplest solutions is for all of us to just start eating bugs. It's not actually that weird of a suggestion, outside of the United States at least. Over 2 billion people in the world already eat insects as part of their regular diet and don't think anything of it. Fried spiders, for example, are a delicacy in Cambodia. Apparently they taste like soft-shell crabs. Fried scorpions are a popular street meat in China and Thailand. And some Mexican eateries will happily serve you up a plate of French fried caterpillars or some chocolate-covered locusts. Farming insects for meat produces far fewer greenhouse gases than, say, rearing cattle. And they require a fraction of the water. In terms of both their low environmental impact and the speed they reproduce, eating insects is kind of the miracle solution to the problem. The only miracle here is that I haven't thrown up yet. You know, bugs are better for you as well as the environment. Cricket meat, for example, is being touted as a form of superfood. It's around 60% protein and it's packed with iron, calcium and vitamin B12. They're also delightfully crunchy. Let's assume bugs are off the menu. What else is there to eat? Another protein option is meat grown in the laboratory, what's known as cultured meat. In 2013, the first ever cultured meat burger was cooked and eaten in London, England. It was made from stem cells taken from a cow that were then grown into strips of muscle. These strips were then combined to form the patty. The food critics present were pleasantly surprised, with one claiming that she would have picked it over a soy imitation burger in a blind taste test. So it's meat from a petri dish. Uh, a petri dish! <laughs> uh, yeah. Unfortunately, as with insect meat, the biggest barrier here is a lack of understanding. Cultured meats have been labelled Franken-meats by the tabloids, and naturally this has caused some public distrust, which is a shame, because as well as tasting pretty good, it has a bunch of advantages over regular meat, including the fact that they contain no heart attack-causing saturated fats. So why don't we do this instead of the ugh, bug thing? Cultured meat is currently too expensive to produce in large enough quantities, although the technology is improving all the time. In the short term, though, what we desperately need is for every country to unselfishly pull together and share their resources to ensure there's enough food for everyone. We're screwed, aren't we? Completely. Tune in next time for more I Learned a Thing in the Bathroom. And in the meantime, head to DollarShaveClub.com for more podcasts and a big old pile of grooming products.